Stop Let's get it started. That. Resistance. All right. Ready? Yeah. Shoot yeah. that shit off. Oh, yeah. Fire that shit off. Your brother Bam. Bam. Hard luck. Yeah. Yeah. Hard luck royalty in the house. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. yeah. Bam. Your brother basically hard luck. Good morning and welcome to Hard Luck Show. I'm your certified, qualified West Side host, Steve Lucky Luciano. Sitting across from me is my co-host, True Mahan Bone, American Indian, elegant barbarian, Southern Californian, up in this piece once again. And on sound, Old Blue Eyes himself. Yep. That's Sean Lewis. Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, old, old Blue, Blue Eyes. Eyes. Uh, yes. Illegitimate yes. love child of Frank Sinatra. Yep. Allegedly. Yep. Allegedly. allegedly. From uh, a roll in the hay in Carson City. Keeping it real fucking high and tight. Short. Oh, uh, yeah. Real short. Yeah. Short, <laughs> high and tight. <laughs> Super tight, right? Short and tight. <laughs> short and tight. Uh, he'd be, he be, he be popular no, in certain circles. <laughs> there ain't no water getting up in that frog dance. <laughs> Well, it's water type. Huh, we it's call water that type water type. Real. <laughs> He's keeping it slick in that face. Yeah, we got motherfucking. Don't get mad. Uh, I'm not mad. We got old motherfucking. King. Salmon, King Salmon. Oh. On some visuals, you know. Hallowed be thy scales. Dragon balls. Oh, dude, this one, I uh, never mind. We won't get into it. Okay, please. We'll get into it later. But, yeah. All right. All right. Please. Hey, and we have some royalty in the house tonight. That's right. Part of the hard luck That's family. Right. By way of Las Vegas, Big Poncho in the house. Welcome Poncho! to the show, Poncho. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Punch? What's happening? The man, the king of Vegas. And, hey, the king of Vegas. And not to be rude, but you did bring a, a friend with you, a yes. visitor with you today? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to introduce that friend? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a uh, queen of the bully game when it comes to the transport internationally known young Haley young, <laughs> Haley. young Haley internationally yeah. known young Haley yeah. yeah yeah right on what is up man it's been a minute it's man been a minute brother yeah yeah I would get so I, I think it's so, you got some crazy amount of downloads on your show yeah just on like when you go look it up as far as overall a lot of downloads of people are uh, people that have been on the show, guests. Yeah, and yours is is deep, bro. And uh, people still, I still get comments on stuff about you. I still get people <laughs> like, "Yeah, hey, Poncho," you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, yeah. yeah he made an impression. Ago, deep, yeah, right. People bring you up, man. Still, so I was like, I've been wanting to have you on. It's yes, just, yes, you, yes, you, yeah. you, you know, we, we got this, man. It seems like uh, I'm sometimes when I'm hitting some strides. My man has maybe been at some challenges, and then he starts hitting some strides, and I'm at some challenges. And it's like, uh, you know, that doesn't yeah, always land alone that's how, hey, that's, us to meet up with the That's together. how an engine yeah. works, right? Piston well, goes up, and yeah, it goes down. Oh, that's what's turning the motor. Then you can help me up. Hey, 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 get it. <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, here we both are, and you drove out, and I, I can't be happier about it, man. Um, What's going on with you, brother? Oh, man. Good things. Uh, first, always appreciate, you know, the the warm welcome, mm -hmm. you know, you and the crew. Mm. Um, and like you said, you know, it's ebb and flow, especially when you are tilling the soil, kind of clearing your own path. Um, no one taught us how to do any of this. We just, uh, we apply ourselves. So for right. me, staying, staying loyal to the culture that that raised me mm. um you know planted seeds things are starting to really uh come together in vegas now so you know mainly focused on the new launch in vegas vegas classics and customs which is putting the two loves of viklas and ronflas uh bikes and cars together um really 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 buckled down to create a space for that I mm. uh, started doing a lot of car shows and and events. Uh, I think I reached out to you. I reached out to Esteban one day, and I said, "Hey, man, you know, we we got a culture, we got a scene out here, and why uh, why don't you 
come and, and check it out and shoot it. And basically, he was like, you know what you're doing. Do it yourself. <laughs> Not in a diss, but like, yeah. get to it. You know yeah. what I mean? Get to it, man. Good <laughs> job. Get to it. Right. So so I took that and uh, did what we, we always do. Started searching for a location where I could... Uh, bring it all together and invite people like yourself out and him and have a home once you get there. So I got a space one block from the stadium, from Raider Stadium. Okay. Um, I like the sound of that already. Two blocks from the strip. And uh, it's 4,800 square feet of nothing but uh, culture, you know. Um, and, and that's what we're, we're banging on right now in construction as we speak. Hope to be done uh, early March. So we'll okay. we'll do a grand opening and you know, invite yeah. everybody down. Shit. Yeah. So that that's the we got we new you're, gonna, you're gonna have to a find a reason to uh, to be in <laughs> Vegas in March. Yeah. Oh, I just heard one. <laughs> yeah. I just heard the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll we'll have some broadcast capabilities and streaming cap capabilities out of that facility too. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, so it'll be all inclusive. Okay. Just bring your mics. Yeah. So you get the same. Uh, yeah. Oh, same yeah. Yeah. That's that it. Out. Just bring the mic. <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. Yeah. So, <clears throat> how long is the drive for Poncho from Vegas to here? What's it today? What's it? Today and these days, it's typical. It's no more, uh, you know, 110 miles an hour. I'm not on my bikes, especially, but uh, I, I'm cruising now, man. I'm letting people go around me. I'm right. just. I mean, I think. W the last time I came and when I was coming back and forth, I think I had four tickets in one year, <laughs> you know, ranging from 96 to 105. And I uh, had real good officers, Highway Patrol, to yeah. care of me, bumped it down a little bit, but I just got tired of getting the tickets. So I'm just doing a speed limit, man. Six hours probably with stops, five hours, you know, no and traffic. <laughs> what's the ultimate... What's the ultimate... Uh, road snack like when you're driving pon like what are you you're like I'm oh the ruffles queso chips um red bull oh man Reese, wait a minute you see how quickly <laughs> yeah, there's he no knew. ruffles <laughs> <laughs> see that's somebody not bullshitting you right they know you know right you know what i'm saying right everybody knows right yeah. he just didn't have any kind of filter on that shit he was like oh yeah ruffles yeah but ruffles right. what ruffles. queso the queso queso, queso, queso yeah. with the red bull yeah with, with the, the red bull, bull. and, and definitely i'm with that Definitely have to have Reese's peanut butter cup just to push that sugar. Right. Yeah. Oh man. For the energy. Yeah, that's yeah. for the energy. That was, right. That that came from from the you know being on the bike on, you know, 15, 16, 18 hour trips. Yeah, because the Reese's peanut butter cups focuses the ruffles high. Right? You yeah. eat the ruffles and the queso, you yeah. get a little crazy, then you little. eat the Reese's pieces, and it focuses the high down yeah. a little You got to bring it down with that. It gets out that protein. You know? <laughs> it's got that peanut butter, so it's rich in protein. What's your road trip snack, dude? Vanilla wafers or those vanilla wafers? What do you eat? Although those vanilla wafers are very good, yeah. uh, when I was eating meat, there was definitely some jerky in the mix. Yeah. Got to have Same jerky, here, right? bro. When I was eating meat. Now I get the fake jerky. I don't know, bro. Have you tried that? Yeah, yeah, I like it actually. Beyond meat, yeah, 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 yeah. I, try, I, I, I fucking I like love it. that. I a couple of bags. I don't. Of that yeah, shit. well, why did it, there's not enough in one bag? I right, eat the right. Whole so, you know, it's two. Yeah. I gotta get two. Right. I gotta get two and a fucking. I hate to say it. A Lenny and Lenny's. <laughs> uh, I mean, dude, that's like to me, dude. Let me just. That's say, a meal. That's really. <laughs> You give me a nice coffee from Seven Eleven, and those two things, like the jerky and right, the fucking right, and I'm and that's my root. That's my go to road right, food. Right. So, so I would do jerky when I was eating meat for sure. And I'm talking about like burnt up, fucked up jerky from like a nondescript gas station that looked like the mud flap. You know that thin one that looked like a mud flap on a truck or whatever. I would eat that. Like somebody was just making that shit out of the back of the. Right. Pepperoni enough to choke a horse. I would eat those pepperonis and it wouldn't matter. Cheese with it? Uh, Cheese teriyaki stick. flavor, regular flavor, extra hot. Hey, the, 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 the pepperoni with the fucking long white cheese stick with it? Yeah, I'd eat it together. <laughs> <laughs> Even pickled. <laughs> Even pickled, pickled fucking absolutely. pepper, the hot, red hot, pickled red hot. I try even let that. Let me ask you Go ahead. something, Punch. Go ahead. Let's punch. Let me ask you something. What's the craziest shit you've seen 
in these well, fucking little side yeah. side yeah. spots in between here and Vegas. Because Vegas got oh, some weird shit. They yeah. got between here and Vegas. You know, uh, the Scorpion, I think it's Scorpion on a stick or something like that. But it's not that weird. Right. Because no. you get used to seeing it. Right. The weirdest, again, not weird because I've had it, is yeah. uh, Gator. Gator. Yeah. yeah. Alligator. Fried oh, alligator. Where? Yeah. Where was can, that? Oh, I just call uh, that a chicken snack. Somewhere up in... <laughs> Uh, Texas, I think. Gator. Yeah, somewhere up in Texas. You can get How gator. How was it? It was good. Yeah. It was like chicken. It's like chicken. It's yeah. like a. It's oh, like, you've eaten it? I've eaten yeah. gator in Louisiana. And no problem. It tastes problem. like chicken. It's like chicken. It's like on its way to fish. White fish. Chicken on its way to white fish. That's gator. Yeah, I don't eat it anymore because wow. I got a pet gator, but. You know, so oh, that changed right. your feeling I, it on it. My, while it changed my feeling, bro. <laughs> my Korean friend yeah. said the same thing. Now, about now, dogs. Are, are, do they say alligators are um, a, uh, a reptile? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh hell yeah, that's a so reptile. A, so that's a different type of meat that you're eating. Yeah, when you yeah. Eating that. that's not like it's that, different, dude. You're that's a different type of meat, yeah. but than uh, uh, um. What, what do we got? Horses and, I mean, cows yeah. and, and everything. No, else. it ain't a red meat. And here's the thing, dude. That's what gets you believing in evolution because you're like, well, a gator is in between a bird and a fucking fish. And that meat is kind of like that. It Because, you know, they say the birds came from dinosaurs, which were fucking reptiles, mm -hmm. right? So when you eat a gator, you're like, you know, this is kind of like meat that's it's in It's like a hybrid? Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm eating the middle part. I don't know. What about, hey, Poncho, what about uh, you ever eaten? Is a rabbit the same in that same category or no? No. Okay. No, but but have you tried rabbit? Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, I've tried rabbit. It's okay. No okay. possum either. I don't like it. Yeah, oh, this guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> he can't even look at a possum. This guy right here. That's <laughs> dude. That's, that's like, like your kryptonite. Rat. Yeah, that's, that's like you a rat, dude. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck a possum. I'll shoot a possum, man. Fuck a... I mean, so well out of eating a hillbilly fucking... motherfucker. Like the... You would have to honestly. Yeah, I might have to be dead for you to get possum. Uh, that's that. called Tennessee turkey. Yeah, that's yeah, what they yeah, eat right. at Thanksgiving. But I know, but they got possum pies. Real thing. <laughs> no, but what about uh, so, armadillo too? Right? <laughs> yeah, that's armadillo. weird. What is an armadillo? Is that I a, a possum with a shell on it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shelled possum. <laughs> yeah. And what about uh, you ever eaten Rocky Mountain oysters? I have not, but I'm not afraid of shit like that. Yeah, that doesn't. A... No, no, I have. I've eaten. Rocky Mountain Orange, deep fried, deep fried Rocky. Right. Yeah, fantastic. Right. Yeah, Nothing man. wrong with it. Yeah. Hey, Liver King, next stop, I fucking no sheep balls. No that's, problem. Like, that's like uh, oysters or something. Right. You know like, Done deal, problem. pal. Yeah. Right. What about snake? You ever eaten snake? No. No. I had a snake. And it, it's like eating a gator. So it's a dry gator. Yeah. It, I, I want to say, I'm saying no, but I'm trying to, I feel like, no, those frog legs. I had frog legs. Oh, you yeah. have frog that legs? That me out. Yeah. How I, was that? Yeah. That was good. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. juicy. Like yeah. chicken, like chicken. That's what I'm trying to tell like you. like chicken, right? It's in between. Is it, how, how different See, is a frog? that's another in between, though. That's Look right. Look at that. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. In between fish and bird. That's exactly. It. See, but that stuff, my parents, I tried it when I was a little kid. Yeah. But as soon as I knew what the fuck was up, yeah. I was grossed out by a frog leg. <laughs> fuck a frog leg. Like, that's not for me. Right. But, dude, that's Very that's fine okay. French all right, cuisine. All right. Enchanté. Right. No, mm. Enchanté. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, I got say. <laughs> no, but okay. All right. That's, I mean, How about what, turtle? You I've eaten turtle. Oh, hell yeah. Tortuga? Hey, ain't nothing Tortuga. wrong with that. It's like beef soup. That one's more like oh, beef. Man, it's weird. Dude, that's stuff they call it kawama. Kawama. In, 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 in Mexico, they call it kawama. I don't kawama anymore. Um, yeah, yeah, it is it's good. good. It's good to make a soup out of it. Right. Um, right. What right. about well, that's weird? good. What about you've eaten octopus? Yes. Okay. I'm not crazy about it. I like some I don't think fried anybody... squid. Yeah, yeah calamari. calamari. Mm -hmm. Anyways, anyways, now I get back on the yeah. track of where we're at. Yeah, where are we? What, bunch, <laughs> what's going on with the bully scene? Bully scene, man. Uh, a lot of crazy things going on with the bully scene because uh, it's a race, and I, I think, um, dude, is G'd up. By the way, it's a race. For, My man, don't uh, miss a beat over here, dude. <laughs> right. I just look at the way he comes in and shows right. up. It's like always oh, died. Right. It's, this guy don't miss a beat. It's a race for who can um, outdo who on, on on a genetics trail, which you mm. know is not really. 
we're not really fully ready to talk about it, but the next time I come, which is me committing to coming back, okay, uh, yeah, we're gonna bring in a couple of people, man, and we're gonna really break down here what to expect in 2023. There's some big stuff happening in in LA, so I'll be back. But since you were talking about my fit mm-hmm. and me being G'd up, you know, I did bring you a gift, man. And what? It is, oh, it here is, we go. It is my personal man, one of my this personal. Guy. This is when I really think I'm gonna be Dapper Dan. So this is a heavyweights. Uh, only me and the heavyweights have this. It's is this that one right? right here. Yeah, yeah. Look at this, man. So uh, what? For my that brother. is bad. Yeah. You know, I always try to man, try to bad. put something on you, brother. So uh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, this one's. I'm gonna have to. Oh, man, get it's like under the table. I can't yeah, see yeah. what it, it is. It actually fits. It actually fits. Yeah, the and it turned. Let me see. Let me see this. Yeah, turn around the other way. It does. It actually does fit this finger. Yeah. Hey, dog, that's crazy, bro, because it fits <laughs> almost perfect. To- My brother. Man, dude, that's beautiful, bro, yeah, you know? Yeah. And look, and that Guadalupe. Damn! Uh, I have that Guadalupe. If anybody knows me, yeah. I have a big one on my on, it. on my yeah. shoulder right here. Right, right on, now, dude. You know? That's a fucking... Damn, that's a beautiful ring, yeah, bro. Man. That's huge. Wow, put put that in the camera so we can see it. Yeah, show the people. Yeah, show the people. Yeah, show the people. Yeah. Official heavyweight. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah. Right. Dude, his oh, biceps are going to get bigger on that side. You're going to have to get him on for the other side yeah, so it's yeah, not yeah. unbalanced. Listen, let me tell you something, man. Please do. It, this thing, like if I had to go get something fitted, yeah. it would be this. I broke this knuckle. So I, I have to get over the knuckle? Yeah. And then once it's over the knuckle, it ain't coming but off. That's what Poncho said. I mean, he knows that the guys he's dealing with got broken knuckles yeah. somewhere. <laughs> How, bro? This guy got it on the money, though, bro. Right. The money. That's because nice. it was meant to be yours. No, it, it really yeah. is. Dude. I really believe that right now. I'm going to leave this ring on because there's no way you that that happens yeah. like that, bro. So last time I gave you a Buddha because we needed to calm yeah, it down. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> and I, I have a little shrine. I'll yeah. take a picture of it. I have a little shrine in my in my place, yeah. and in that little shrine are my mom's elephants. That yes, my mom yes. goes, that's yeah. she pointed them and did the whole thing. She collected elephants, and and I've got your yeah. little statue yeah, that you yeah. gave me along with a couple yeah. other little ones. Yes, dude, so and, and every day, bro, I recognize it and see yeah. it, bro. So you know what I'm saying? So this you need something awesome, to travel dude. with you. That says Lux all the way, right? Big Lux in the house. Heavy. That cat, uh, he, he's he's uh, he comes in town from London once a year into Vegas for the Viva Las Vegas show. Again, back to our cars and and and, and bikes events that brings in some of the best people in the country into Vegas. And um, you know, he only had one of one ring cut like that. Is that right? Ours are round, so you know it's a little different. That's dope. But, uh, but yeah, man, that's the Dapper Dan. That's it. Dapper <laughs> Dan, he's got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I that's like that ass, bro. My yeah. brother. Yeah. So, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. I came up. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. That came up tonight. Yeah. Well, don't don't show Vladimir Putin that ring. Mm-hmm. Vladimir Putin ain't getting nothing. Remember that? Bro. He took Robert he might, Kraft. Vladimir Putin he might took just Robert Kraft Super Bowl. <laughs> he might just get a little Guadalupe right <laughs> over his eye, like a like blessing, a little yeah. fucking a tattoo little blessing right there. over his yeah. eye. Yep. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, That's dude. fucking bad. Yeah, dude. Nobody's brought me anything like that. I love it. Yeah, you. I'm a blast this thing. You have to let me know who the who, the the, uh, the IG. Yeah, the how do we I take care of uh, whoever? Uh... I have no idea. He's a vendor from London. I go. Mm-hmm. We go all the way to the back. My man Chops from Chops the Barber in, in Vegas. Chops uh, took me to him, and my other brother Cisco. So me, Chops, and Cisco we're the heavyweights. Tone Chicone, Jesse Jokers, and uh, Chooch, and uh, I like India. that name, Chooch. Yeah, all good family. Um, and we got more to come, and so we, we, we uh, this one guy, like I said, I go in the back. We're the only ones with the rings. Go in the back. Man. I see, <laughs> I get mine, and, and uh, brother Roland uh, Tagle from, from, you know, Whittier, he's in Vegas with me, uh, had to bless him. We built Bella together in his his uh, garage, two brothers from the hood. That's my that's my Springer that kind of set me on this bike journey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh so yeah, you know, 
I, I'll get it the next time he comes in town, which is uh, 2023 Viva. Oh, yeah. Dude, right. when I come okay. back, I'll, I'll definitely uh, share I, his info. I got to tell you, I mean, uh, Poncho might be the most one of the most masculine dudes. <laughs> <laughs> this is one <laughs> manly <laughs> dude, right? On, yeah, he is. I mean, no, I've, yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen is. a lot of people give yeah. people jewelry. No one did it as manly <laughs> as Poncho. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, like, yeah, check yeah, out yeah, his yeah, ring. Yeah. And went in the back. I was at my brother's from my brother Roland. <laughs> went in the back with the only one with the ring. That's it. Right. That's it. That's it. This is hey, you serious. Don't you don't understand me. You don't that's stutter it. when you tell the truth, right? Right. No. Well, that's is. true. Look at there that. <laughs> like, I love that. What is Guadalupe known for? What's the? What is she like? The saint for? Man, she was taking care of kids. Man, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I understand that shit, man. I <laughs> get that right. You said that she to the camera like, the what? Kids, <laughs> hey, Guadalupe. It's all kids. about the kids, What, man. this ring? Yep. Yeah. I love it. That's what it's all about, yeah. too. That's why I love her, because she's yeah. all about the kids. Don't ever forget that. Don't man. ever forget Virgen that. Virgen de Guadalupe. Hey, hey Guadalupe. And uh, the Virgin Mary was doing it over in Italy. Hey, and, oh, hell, what up? She was doing it in Guadalupe. And, Amen. Uh, Salud. Mm -hmm. Listen, let me tell you something. Every night... My mother-in-law. I don't even know what she says to my daughter, right? Mm -hmm. and my daughter is like, I want to say, you know, the Abway. And I carry her over mm -hmm. to grandma. Grandma comes out of her little bedroom, and she goes like this to my daughter. She goes, she says something. I don't know what it is. She I still say the Espiritu. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. And then she puts her hand up, and my, mm -hmm. and my daughter goes, Amen. I'm like, oh, I fucking love that shit. She gets the, I don't know what that is, what that blessing is, that Catholic yeah. blessing or whatever. Yeah, that is. yeah, yeah. And my daughter's like with it. She's like, amen. She doesn't say <laughs> amen. She says, amen. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's the real shit right there. Yeah, man, the, the Antio de Cristo. The, yeah, the, yeah. That, that's yeah. My, was my grandmother, Cat, Sicilian Catholic. Bro. Yeah. Like, they, they'd say, she would do all that to me, dude. She would do all that. Yeah. Every time she'd see me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Well, that's yeah, why man. you're here, man. I yeah. mean, come no, on. No, but uh, I think that I I just find that that's hard to find these days, bro. Oh, you can't find that. What you're talking about? I right? know. Yeah. You don't yeah, see it Yeah, those kind of blessings. Uh, yeah, and they definitely carried us through. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, without us, especially our street kids, the, the they found our family on the street. And our brothers and sisters on the street, and um, if we didn't have somebody praying over us before right. we left that house, before we got to the age, I'll be back, and don't come back. Um, we don't know what would have happened, you know. And that's where we all found each other, you know. So uh, remind me again, prayers. how did you guys meet? How did you guys first hook up or meet up? How did that go? It's been so long since he's been here. I don't remember. Like high school, man. Yeah. Like going to. Yeah. All the underground clubs were exploding in Los Angeles at a certain time. Yeah, were you, didn't you? Were you a dancer? Yeah, yeah. That was, that was we a, did. It was a bunch of we things. Did, yeah, well, it was, was like everything. Yeah, yeah. But but that's that what you guys we met. Though. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> he 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 grew up on the west side, and and uh, me, we knew each other from like there was like this underground. If you knew, you knew. Um. Kind of like club scene happening right yeah. adult clubs with kids getting in on right. stage right, right. it was going on and and on the west side it was happening maybe a little edge of valley but but it was happening on the west side in different areas and we all knew about this mm -hmm. it's just certain people knew what was up like about and and it was where it was cracking and that's we were both all showing up man to these you know, these different yeah. events and uh, in addition to that was also like a lot of parties and crossover shit going on on yeah. the west side yeah um, so when was we, this? this is this was man this is early uh, 80s yeah man like so, so 83, 83 84 yeah, yeah. And, and the thing about it is it was 10th, 10th grade dude yeah. it was like 82 yeah we didn't have uh, now we have all this uh, cross pollinization and culture and production meaning MTV and all these other uh, networks were the first to come and kind of capture. So if they wanted to do a live event, of course, Santa Monica, Venice, all of that, they, they'd come later in the 90s. But back then, no one could see. So that we were bubbling since 82, 83, 84, really. So you had skate, punk, um, true... Um, you know, Chicano culture, yeah. Uh, brothers. Someone recently did a 
documentary on one someone from Venice Shoreline and talked about that. You know, so Santa Monica, Venice, Culver City, pouring into Westwood at night just to see who was driving, and all of us were kids. Or you come all the way into Santa Monica. Right. Or you come on Venice. We were talking about that earlier. There was, there was a homeless guy on, on, on the boardwalk when I was like 16, and he had a... a, a uh, really? Staffshire, what was he thinking? Staffshire Terrier. Yeah. <laughs> so hmm. every weekend I'd go and say, "Let me buy your dog," and every weekend he'd say, "No." And he, but he taught me a lot about that breed. What did What did he tell you? What did he oh, teach you about? Man. What's to know about a Stafford Terrier or whatever? Well, they're different from pit bulls, and they have different temperaments. So a really loyal dog, really smart dog, and they look just like little trophies and uh you know he i wasn't calm with dogs at the time so he's like man you can't you know i wanted to pet the dog you can pet the dog i go to pet him he says no man dude, take it easy you know slow down he's he's not he's not a puppy he just looks like a puppy because he's little right. and so uh how i approach dogs changed because of him um that i thought that I could do better than him as a dog owner because I had a house and he didn't, but that dog was fat. It was happy. And sure. he was kind of towards the end of the boardwalk. So I'd stop, get pizza, meet him down there. Sometimes he ate with me, sometimes he didn't. But uh, so I d designed a breed program off of this guy's dog. It took me five years to get a dog to look like his dog. No shit. Because pits were scattered. They were all, some were tall, some were short, some had big heads, some had little heads. So... Uh, so yeah, you know, it, again, Venice, Santa Monica, Culver City, uh, man, we had people who opened their doors for us and we had people who closed their doors because of us, <laughs> you know, they saw us coming and they're like, all oh, these hoodlums. So, but yeah, man, that's how the family was built way back then. I think, you know what I mean? And, and people had their perspective hoods, but when we saw each other, we were family. I don't, I don't mean to keep going back to this, but I am fascinated with it because I do think that this goes in line with some of the wisdom that you you carry with you what goes into breeding a dog oh, like, shit. yeah oh, um it's a lot it's a lot to be honest with you but i'll transfer it to it's like building a car a low ride or a bike mm -hmm. you have to know what you want out of it before you start and you have to know if the frame, the structure, the, the, the base that you have is enough to get there. And you have to be patient. People want a lot out of dogs. People want a lot out of a motorcycle. They want a lot of a lowrider. Right. You can't just get it overnight. It takes time and uh, trial and error. Um, and by the time one of the conversations we were having, uh, which, you know, if we're going to keep talking about dogs, I got to let Haley speak about this. One of Please. the things we were talking about was... You may get it, but miss the bubble. So you may be working on it. Someone else got it. And by the time you get it, people are off of it and on to the next thing. Right. So, I mean, it, 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 but it's the same thing with building a bomb or a low rider. Like you build it to your taste, of course. And you build a dog based on you should be what you really love. Because if you don't love it and you're breeding for something else, then when it's no longer hot, you are stuck with, with these the dogs. dogs. And instead of rehoming it, you got to kind of hold on. Unless you know someone who lost a dog or who's lacking something in a program. Well, when you start picking out paint and patterns and all kinds of things, sometimes you can go for a timeless piece when you're building a Ronfla Vicla, or sometimes you can just go for yourself. Right. And no matter what someone else thinks, you're going to hold on to that and it's going to be a part of your collection. And then when people want something from you because you're no longer producing that style, it'll go up in value. Right. So it just depends, man. I mean, it really does. But so, so with, so a dog's a living thing though. It is. So is a car and a bike. You thought it didn't have no soul? I don't know. Yeah, man. It has a soul. It does. Every single car, every bike is different. Same model, same year to the point that the guys who used to build them have told me no car in the early 40s matched, even 30s, because they were making them. One guy was on one side and another guy was on another side. We were running out of material uh, uh, post-war. Right. You know what I mean? I yeah. Think in 
42, they just said, nah, we're, <laughs> we're holding all of this stuff. So, <clears throat> you know, again, the culture, it lives and breathes. And I think when you're not in it, you do think it's different. But, and it's, a gar- it's metal gardening. And so is breeding dogs. It's gardening of these genes and these, these attitudes and this DNA pool and um, genetics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes I mean? sense to me what you're saying. Yeah. What about what is like maybe the most surprising thing about breeding dogs? Like what would be something that you surprising? Um, I don't know. The surprising you you look for the surprises. Most people who are really doing it, I think they look for um, some slight mutations of of their breed. I think early on, before we moved into bullies. Which again, it, this this just can only be the first because I have something planned for it for the real you know because it's going to hurt some people's feelings how I feel about bullies. But back when we were dealing with pit bulls, um, it was discovering the genetics, but also bloodlines and traits. So we had what we called game dogs um, that were curs. People were trying to fight dogs, and they would find out that dog didn't have it, and it hurt their feelings. At the same time, I had a dog lay on me for two years and then snap and tear my house up, which what is what changed my direction on how I bred, and I was very cautious. Uh, this dog was a house dog. He right. had never shown any aggression. And uh, one day I came home, and my spot was just... Tora. Yeah, and he had hit two puppies and my female who was trying to protect but I knew the bloodline he came off of. I knew he was a serious dog. Right. Um, it was the Storm's bloodline, Vera Storm's. Her husband and her had created some real hot dogs. And I had a badass dog, Capone, that I thought would uh, just be able to be a part of the family inside the house. And his brother, Chaos, was a grand champion in Mexico. Wow. So uh, <laughs> I missed that one. You know what I mean? Right, so, right, so, right. so. Epic failure. So. <sighs> Now, this is fascinating to me because <clears throat> so based on what you've seen up to this point then, right, mm-hmm. I'd like to hear your perspective on nature versus nurture. Duh. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, the nature of the dog is disturbed by man already right <laughs> as soon as but, we as soon as we brought them into the the scenario yeah, right but, but you know, like i said we could get a, a headset on Haley and maybe get her to speak a little bit too because because again it's it feels a little you know funny having her uh next to me and she's not speaking on this but for me the nature uh, <coughs> the nature <coughs> is a, a little bit hey can she can have my not? she can have my headphones I want to hear right. about it. the the nature is definitely uh, somewhat a part of it, but s- some of us people try to make it a big deal, calling themselves dog whispers and so on and so forth. Like when Caesar, it, that dude Caesar. <laughs> Damn it! Mm-hmm. Come bro, on, this man. is the next show. It's not this one, bro. Because I don't I don't want to have I want beef, but just not until to twenty twenty. That's fine. You can just te- you can just so, trailer. It I know I'm I'm known. Caesar probably would say he doesn't know me. But I could tell him one story when he'll say he does know me oh, because I named, I named my dog Caesar after he bit Caesar. So and this was when Caesar was a dog handler. He was a trainer, but not for me, but he was he was moving a dog. So the thing is, Cesar, is that, Cesar. Yeah, you know, solid <laughs> you might dude, need to get he's, blessed he's, by the Guadalupe. So, solid yeah. dude, you know, did his thing. But a lot of people, a lot of trainers, a lot of. You know, California guys that I respect, um, Daryl, Big Rich, uh, Diedrich, a lot of people have um, shown the same thing, which which I want Haley to talk about this because of the kind of work she does besides the international transporting and local and, you know, ground and all that. It's that the nurture can absolutely change everything you think you know about a dog. It, you, you, you know, it takes training. But it also takes nurturing. So let me let me let Haley respond a little bit. To yeah, this. young Haley, internationally <laughs> known. Wow. Please wow. come to the microphone. Yeah. So nur- nurture versus nature versus nature. What do you what do you think about that in terms of dogs and personalities? 
I do think a lot of it is down to the bloodlines. Um, like you said, with the pit bulls, American bullies, anything that you breed in, the Malinois, German Shepherds, Dobermans, Rottweilers. People know what are the hot dogs, what dogs are going to be triggered from certain things just due to the bloodlines. Um, and it's really when I believe man starts messing with bloodlines. So really like... I don't want to say too much about the Frenchies because, again, yeah. the wait, Frenchies wait, wait, wait. and the Million Dollar Dogs is a whole different podcast on how ma man has changed genetics and all the time bringing out a new design of dog, whether it be pink, koi, husky. It's still a French bulldog, so it's man's interference a lot of the time. However, it's desire. It's it's bringing in millions of dollars. Nobody really knows about that part of the dog world where, you know, dogs sell for a million dollars. People kidnap dogs for ransom. Correct. Man, yeah. I could sit here and listen to dog talk all day. <laughs> they so it, steal. They steal. Steal each other's. Right. Well, but here's the issue. So, so, so I'm kind of I'm thinking about it because you're right. There's an intervention by humans. I'm gonna say humans. I ain't gonna say man. I'm gonna say humans. Humans, All correct. Right. That's fine. You say, whatever. This is me. But the issue is, is so I'm thinking about there was a time, right? There was a time when you know humans were around the fire, and the dogs weren't necessarily involved yet. But they knew that there was food and shit around that fire. And at some point, there became a mutual beneficial relationship that changed both humans and dogs probably forever. Right? Because mm -hmm. I've read certain things about, like, mm -hmm. domesticated dogs. And then putting an asterisk by domesticated. Because like you said, Poncho, it's like, yeah, he might be a house dog, but there's something in there maybe. Right. It's still a wild animal somewhere in there, right? Right. But <clears throat> that, that, so, because the, the other thing that I really trip out on is the African wild dog, which mm -hmm. is much more successful than a lion in terms of hunting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think about, they say that the domesticated dog has such a knack at reading human faces that a chimp who we're like, you know, 1% different from or whatever can't read a face as well as a domesticated dog can. If it, they, they did these tests and they, the, the human would look at a cup that had food underneath it. Domesticated dog knew every time where the food was, chimp was confused. Yeah, but see, you started it off right. And uh, <laughs> like I said, this, this is a part of a bigger conversation, which is um, you said, well, there was a time that man and dog was separated. <clears throat> The thing is, is man has always worried more about himself than, than his environment, and it's been to his detriment in some situations. Even when he's making fire, he was just looking at the fire, right? The dog was looking at the man and the fire. So domesticated dogs um, are still descendants of wolves. Well, so domesticated so, humans are still descendant <laughs> right. of so, wild animals as well. So that that dog has had a long time to study us the yeah canine yeah okay even coyotes is domesticated dogs and wolves mm -hmm. and so i think the thing about a, a dog is uh i think i don't know or any animal that it has to be my gator if i say wally he he turns around if i say come here he comes you know what i mean yeah if i don't feed him he barks cuz yeah. he's a gator pup so a lot of animals have this. And right. again, it's, it's, you know, it's, we start to interfere, they start to change. Sure. But I think there's some things that are innate to them, and that is watching us. And it is the funniest thing to communicate with your dog without words or, you know, looks and laugh. Like, if you laugh, they're going to wag their tail. Right. Even more so than the high-pitched voice. That Sometimes that ain't fooling them. They're like, yeah, you, you're using a cute voice, but you want to give me a shot or a bath or something. Bro, but you can't break down laughter with a dog. He, don't, he believes it. I watched this documentary where they were talking, and it was set in England. Mm. And they were talking about these dog, that dogs have some sort of sense because it's more than just smell. They could tell when the owner was getting close to the house. Right. And they did all these experiments to, like, mess up the smell. They put, they put the owner 
in a postman's car that normally comes in the... You're smiling, Haley. Why? <laughs> I, I'm smiling because my own dogs do that. So my own dogs can hear the car that's coming before the car arrives. Right. Because they let they start barking. Right. And you know what, man? I just... um. I just got done reading a book about code talkers and some other stuff. And in some of the Indian, American Indian stories, uh, origin stories, they talk about that the wolf and the man are actually brothers. That when the creator created the human, he created the wolf, not a woman, yeah. right? Like in the, in the yeah. Eden story, he created a wolf to keep the man company. And that's, at least in that tradition and for that tribe, they view themselves as related, and they were friends. They hunted together. They did stuff together. And at some point, the grandfather said, all right, you guys are going to go your separate ways now. Yeah, Let right. me, you know, I'm, I'm curious, though. There had to have been a point in time where man, whoever it was that was walking around at the time, like got a hold of either like some baby wolves or baby cubs and like somehow the mother got like ate some poison and died or something like that mm. and they raised these little things right mm -hmm. and they were cute and they weren't going to slaughter them and the, and the little things wouldn't leave and so they raised these cute things right sure they fed them they're with them and and who maybe like a case like that like I don't know. You know, there was a lot of motherfuckers running around back in those days. So maybe a fucking tribe Indians like over there, they've got fucking four or five of these dogs and they're about to get ambushed and these dogs fucking start putting the fight up for them. Sure. Yeah. Start handling fucking business. Yeah. Man, dude, when an animal or a human or anybody shows that type of courage when... When the shit goes down, yeah. it creates a bond. You know For what I'm sure. saying? For sure. Well, especially if it's some real shit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and I think that was where, uh, like, the dog became, man, man, like, that idea of man's best friend. Right. I think, so, like, somebody was, like, saw that or experienced it was like, wait a minute, bro. Like... This could work for us. We yeah. need <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Somebody was like, "We need more dogs, man." Like these, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I was the other night. I'm watching uh, a rapid film of all these sheep's, dude, <laughs> on a mountain, and they're like all like moving, clouds. right? Like clouds, yeah, right? Yeah, I've seen and that. Yeah, and these little dogs, <sighs> and I'm like, I just thought to myself, I was like. Fucking, I wonder how long it took for those motherfuckers, dude, hey. to figure out, like, we can get these dogs to do all of it. <laughs> to bring them all. And we're talking about, right? Yeah. Hundreds of fucking sheep. I'm like, and the dogs are doing it all. There was no cowboys around. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, it's great. I mean, and I just saw a video the other day of, like, a little kid. He's out playing, and his, his Labrador's out there with him, and... So fucking German Shepherd fucking runs at this fucking kid, yeah. and that lab jumped in front, and you've seen all the hair come up on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And it chased that motherfucker down. Like, he thought he was about to do something, and hell no, man. It, it, it was protecting this kid, and the kid yeah. got back in the house. Yeah. But it was like, it, these experiences with canines, dog, with dogs, like, they, they have a, 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 a love and they defend that love and that with courage. Like, there's no thinking to them. They're not caught up in the shit that we're caught up in. Yeah. To them, it's like, you know, almost like that. As primal as like, you feed me. You're my whatever. You yeah. know, somebody threatens that. And that's where you get these fucking dogs that, you know. Well, dogs are definitely family oriented and social. But like. Yeah. It, as much as that's all true, right? Then that is true. I've seen it. it all dogs defend the family, even that's cross species. It's a fucking sure. human. They're gonna fucking absolutely right. <clears throat> but then when you start watching them wolf documentaries, there is a there is a shit stick dog in the wolf pack. There's a there's a there's the all the wolves. There's the alpha, and then there's a shithead wolf that has to take a bunch of Haley starting to smile again has to take a bunch of shit from everyone else because it's the lightning rod for criticism the lame wolf in that in nature no one taught him that they're chasing caribou they're yelling at the moon but there's one weak wolf that gets 
attacked and pissed on and punched. <laughs> it's like right, you take yeah, right. There's right? always like, that's, heel. That's, there's the heel wall. Oh, but that's just part of society. You just <laughs> pay attention to that. You got to pay attention I mean, to that because that goes. That how are you going to live without that? What, are we fantasy land or are we no, talking I mean, real like, life? I don't know. There's I don't always a run, a grunt. Yeah, I see Caribou run around. I don't see them. I'm just saying. Yeah, you don't them. see them because yeah, they don't want to show that Haley, part. You want to talk a... on the on the Omega Wolf or whoever it was the one at the end that gets whipped on by everybody else? <laughs> it's same in society with people. I mean, that's oh, true, yeah, but it is. It is. Well, right. It's the same it, thing. Well, and then that one dog that you we were just talking about a pup that that she dealt with, and I think uh, there was a problem with the dog, and the dog had bite marks all over it. She was just telling me on the way here, and and the thing is, the guy's like, I'm one person's like, I'm not taking it. The other person, like, I'm not taking it. And she's like, Okay, I'll take it and I'll deal with it. and I'll get it rehomed. And she said, What's wrong with the dog? Why has it got bite marks? And the person said, You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. And so what happened? I, had a, I showed you a picture of <laughs> my dog, hand. Yeah, it the, was, the dog was the dog was bought for ten thousand dollars by somebody in England. I drove all the way to the Michigan border in the middle of nowhere, just down from Canada. We went, we collected the dog. It had thousands of bite marks all over its body. I asked the guy, Hey, what happened to the dog? He said, You'll see. You'll see. And and while we were there, we did a video. We sent it to the new owners in England. They told us, we don't want the dog. The breeder said, well, I don't want it either. I'm guessing you've got a free dog. Like, I didn't really want the dog. But right. I, did. I felt bad that it had been abandoned. So I was like, okay, well, I'll take it. By the way, that's a human intervention. Feeling for the dog, yeah. right? That's abandoned. And the guy said, I can't keep it because the pack will kill it. Yeah. The so, guy said, you leave it with me, the dog's probably going to end up dead. Uh, and I said, why? And he said, take it and you'll see. Have so, you seen yet? <laughs> I rehomed the dog. I, I trained the dog. I re, we rehomed the dog. We actually shipped the dog to England. The dog turned out a very beautiful dog. Yes. The bite marks went off of its coat. But it was an irritating dog, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it Why irritated it? the hell out of me Why? for eight what, weeks. What makes it irritating? Was it a MAGA supporter? What was the... Just the, <laughs> the, the amount of nipping and the unruliness of the dog. I'm not saying it was the dog's fault. It was a sure. young puppy. I'm not saying it was the young dog's puppy. fault. A young, but it, young listen puppy. Listen to that all day. I yeah. definitely think it was either bullied in the pack or because it was so irritating the others nipped it to tell it pipe back hey, down right which i think is what happened he didn't want, this guy didn't want to cooperate though. yeah right. no. this I, one I wasn't cooperating like that hence, yeah hence, me too hence right. hence the beat down right when yeah you, when you gotta get a beat down yeah, yeah when you don't <laughs> listen when you keep your even the moms at some point the mom is going to tell you when she's done with all of the puppies, but especially that irritating one. Cause yeah. She's looking at you like, get this yeah. puppy away from me, right? right? My nipples are bleeding. Get yeah. the hell out You're of killing me, Smalls. So, right, right. You right. know, I think it's the same thing in culture in the hood. It's it's like, um, but yeah, those, those dogs, those wolves. And the thing about that story that Luck said about, when, you know, that bond of how we came together, it is also said, and you probably heard this the other way around, a kid lost family, not not on some Tarzan jungle, but just locally. Wolves have raised it, possibly raised that French. Protected. There's a French study about that. Yeah, a child, and then that when the child was grew up and they domesticated it, it was always bonded and then started. So how I really learned to train dogs, just being a guy in the hood, didn't know a lot of people at the time. There was a there was an author by the name of Bach that wrote a book about wolves. And I had no idea about perspective of how a puppy saw the world. And he talked about us working with dogs, which is that whole dog whisper concept. It's not a secret that we don't look at the world the same way. So if this water bottle is on the floor or just on the edge, the dog wants to get to it and use his mouth and paws and knock it over and then pick it up. And it breaks the, the plastic and the water goes everywhere, right? Right. So anything is cord dangling. So looking at things from a child's perspective too mm. you know we don't treat puppies like we would treat a little 
baby and they grow so fast yeah. until we expect a lot. So, you know, I um, mean, you're not leading the dog. You're not on all fours crawling around and next to it saying, no, don't grab that. You're up top, tall, over top of it, telling it what to do and then using intimidation most of the time. Right. You know what I mean? Not a, not a soft, you know, um, reprimanding. So he, he had a lot to say uh, about how he viewed wolves and how he viewed domesticated animals and um, it got me interested in training. And then there were several people that helped me after that. How did you meet Haley? Haley through uh, a whole nother, it's nothing to do with, well, that's not true. I was shipping a dog internationally and my partner, Big Reg, Redline Bullies, he contacted and told me about her. So I knew of her through dogs we were sending out of the country uh, because she's been doing this for a while. And yeah. Haley, how did you get into this? I actually saw a guy about eight years ago. His theory was very good. He used to bring puppies from England to the US on a plane. Puppies. Inside puppies. the puppies. cabin. Yeah. His concept and his idea was brilliant, but he was a bit of a scam artist. So <laughs> let's say he'd bring... I already he'd, like him. <laughs> people would pay him for 20 and let's say he might do 10 deliveries and run off with the other 10 people's money. As and by does. the week, next week, he'd have a different name. Sure. So I thought, you know what, his idea is good if he was only legit and did good business. So I sat in my friend's garden and I studied how to do it for three months. And then a guy asked me, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, actually, you know what, I'm thinking of setting up this pet shipping company. He said, you want to take a dog to America, to LA? I was like, sure. I came and I charged him. I ended up going back to England and I was minus about 500 English pounds. Right. So I was like, okay, well, that wasn't very profitable. Right. However, I got to see America. I got to go to LA and it only cost me 500 pounds. You're winning. I kind of adopted that idea till it became profitable. And then I literally made, I think it was about, 15,000 English pounds the first month and then it, it kind of just grew from there like one person told another like the bully community but what were you doing before I mean like so that's an amazing story and very creative and absolutely wonderful perspective but like what are you doing before that like how does somebody go like you know what I'm gonna be in this garden and I'll study this dog thing and I'm just gonna start a dog import export business I mean that's actually is it a departure from what you were doing before? It is, but I had the community because I used to breed and show Staffordshire Bull Terriers and I bred pugs. And you I, showed them. And I bred French Bulldogs. Have you been to one of those dog shows where you walk the dog and the lady touches its butt and of its course. balls and all that stuff? Of course. You have? Uh, of course. I love that. Uh, <laughs> and what is that like? I mean, it, what, what, what don't people... Best in show, right? That Of course. Did I've, you... ta I've taken a lot of best in shows with the Staffordshire Bull was... Terrier. Were which... you running around with the, with the dog? Yeah, yeah. She was. She Pulling was like the running. Dog, yeah. The dog was running. Yeah. Skirt on, blazer on. <laughs> yeah! Hair slicked back. I love that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> best in <laughs> show, <laughs> Haley. That's her new yeah. Yeah. Watching yeah. your P's and Q's. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the best thing I've ever heard. Man, Poncho, you yeah. know the best people, brother. What? Is, I mean, what? Man. Uh, yeah, we, we were talking about that the other day. and Something me and Lux talked about once at dinner, and that's uh, when someone's on the same trajectory. Right. You know, um, you're not always at the same level, but if you're on the same trajectory, man, somehow. And I would, when often when I when I give people the backstory of how many brands, you know, um, Lucky launched and uh, how I like myself of why. See, people say, why do I meet so many diverse folks and so on and so forth and it's the trajectory when people are coming with something new i'm not really a big fan of startups anymore um but i am a fan of people reinventing or reintroducing themselves back to themselves and pushing to the next level and mm. that trajectory oftentimes we kind of fall in line again yeah you know what i mean yeah um, when i was a kid the two three things i was known for was riding two wheels boogieing 
and a dog named Kelly that I travel with everywhere, you know, uh, saved my life before getting jumped in PBG hood. And, uh, you know, so I always had a dog with me and I, I kind of fell off and, uh, a good friend of mine and partner, uh, big Reg, I mentioned earlier, he was the one who rekindled that passion. And so I've been putting out some amazing stuff. Yeah. I have the largest cryptic Merle in the game right now. People will argue, but they don't argue with me. Um, and he just did amazing production. <laughs> but it, it's about collaboration. Mm -hmm. and, people, uh, will, people will argue all <laughs> I <man>, dude. <laughs> 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 well, they won't argue with me. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, bro. Bugs, <laughs> man. Come on, man. <laughs> that was fucking one of the greatest fucking things I've ever heard in the 55 years I've been on the planet. Dude. Wait a minute. People will argue. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. and Mrs. This Herba. fucking guy gets on the show and says, hey, listen here, people. After a long oh, time. people are. <laughs> he didn't even say it like that. It was like matter of fact. Lady, uh, Mr. and Mrs. You put that energy into it. <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> right. He was like telling you like my shoelaces are white. You Mr. Know? That's all you were yeah. saying, dude. People we'll argue, but they won't argue. <laughs> <laughs> like the gall. I love that, man. That's a good one. Now, that has got to be a hard luck quote. Can we purchase or borrow that from you? Yeah. Can we get no that doubt. on recording? Uh, yeah. Uh, no see doubt. that? Yeah. Right. Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Earbuds, if you, if you can't watch this on YouTube, <laughs> you, you just watch <laughs> Big Luck in real time fall apart um, it took a minute that's there was a great, delay man. that's great man here's a handshake going on that was fucking phenomenal that was a handshake I need more of that in my life right yeah. well, alright All right. the gems I'm are sorry. rare that's why they're gems god damn dude. we talked about no. slogans yes there's yours that's my slogan right. man yeah. bro that is a great slogan right that right is here. a great right here. slogan right here hard luck right here yeah Excuse man me. right here yeah <laughs> <laughs> He's falling apart. He can't even say it, ladies and gentlemen. Big because, Lux is falling apart. Because there's a friend of ours, you know. There's a friend of ours, man, that really he's like that too. Like he lives like that. Yeah, and we know. Yeah, but the, uh, you, that is just when you say that, bro, you own that right there. Yeah. you own that, yeah. man. Yeah. Right? That's Punch Yeah, It's real, bro. Yeah. Like, you're not gonna argue with Punch. So, no, man. Hey, man, check that out. Right on. Check that out. <laughs> See that right there? Yeah. <laughs> All so, oh, man, if that's gifts, what's up? So what we got? I, I, so what's... We wrapping what is, this up? I think so, because yes, I think... Uh, what, what's Ponch got going on? Where do they go? How do they hook up? Yeah, Ponch, you're going to have to tell us exactly yeah. where... How do we blast it out I, there? Yep. I think Bad Wolf right now is Bad Wolf Moto Cole. Um, is got what you need because Poncho dot certified. I kind of shut it down. It's private. So Bad Wolf Motor Co on Instagram for now. I'll I'll lace you guys with the link for uh, yeah. Vegas Classics and Customs. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Redline Bullies also because those are my partners on the bully side. Mm -hmm. With Haley, what's your tag? Haley. Jet Pet UK. Jet Pet. Yeah, Jet Pet UK. So it's it's domestic, That's but dope. UK also. For right, it's got all. It's got everything you Jet need to know. Pet Jet Pet UK. UK. Yeah. The fuck? That's a good. That's, That's a good a handle, man. Yeah. Jet Sound like a kind of name somebody who spent like months in a garden thinking Jet up a good <laughs> idea would come up with. Jet Pet. Jet Pet. The it actual rides. company is called Pets for Jets. Pets. I fucking love that. But everybody knows me on Instagram as Jet Pet UK. Man. So I kept the name. Knows me on the <laughs> what is it? Pup, puppy? Puppy. Poopy. 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 Oh, a poopy. He got a yeah. poopy. I got a poopy. Every, all these Instagram pictures hey, yeah, know poopy. me on there. That's the yeah. jet pet. Yeah, man, I love dude. it. Where in England? <clears throat> I mean, so that that accent. Where is that accent in England from? I know there's a various regionalisms and whatnots in England. So uh, most yeah. of us, I'm an, a stupid American. So please tell me. <laughs> Wait, Damn, did, you will never have heard of it. It's a tiny town called Matlock. Matlock. It's called Matlock? Like that, Matlock. that southern lawyer? M-A-T-L-O-C-K. Yeah, Ladies and gentlemen. Matlock. 
I wish we had that theme song. Madlock. That's the best <laughs> thing Madlock, Madlock, Madlock. Yep, yeah, that's, that's the only damn. one. That's Here's all. to Madlock. Salud. I raised an energy drink to Madlock. That's good business. Yeah. Salud. Matlock. You, you broke the mold, Madlock. God bless you, Haley. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Do you care about any of the royal things? Is there anything you could shed light on for anybody on that? Literally, I don't. No. I love that. You see that, everybody? <laughs> uh, I do. I, yeah, see? Just keep that shit real. We yeah. Keep that shit real over here. Well, that's a... Um, I love that. Ponch, it is good to have you here, man. It's good, good to have you. Thank you. Uh, Thank I can't in, wait for the next show. checking next show. in. Yes. Uh, coming out. I wish that I would have planned better because... I would love to go get some to take you guys out to dinner. Yeah. Next um, time, man, we'll, we'll we'll be back for sure. Whenever you'll have us. Right. Yeah, man. Shit. Anytime. Mi casa, su casa, anytime. Right. We'll do a big dinner. Same. We'll fucking yeah. lay out the dog, so yeah. to speak. Right. Red, yeah. Roll out the red carpet. You know what? And I took a picture of your hat. I took a few pictures, but that's yeah. hey, dog. That's like <laughs> that. Honestly, bro, is probably as soon as I saw it, I go. That might be my new favorite hat, right and now. that's how I feel, right? Yeah, you know, Shit. I'm in Vegas, right? We got Raiders in Vegas, right? But that Dodger Damn. blue, man, got to it, It's got to be represented, Damn, man. dude. Like that that's shit is crazy. That yeah. is it right there. Yeah. I'm telling you, dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. commando. Well, I tell you. So we're a little bit caught up. So now we know what's going it. on. I yeah. love it. Big punch. Went in Vegas. Who is the Romans? Yeah. That's it, man. <laughs> Sean, what is going on with you? Yeah, what's going on Sean with you? Sean at movemental.media for everything. Everything in the world. So send me up. Right. www.hardluckshow.com. Right. That's right. Mm. Ovando Bon LLP, we wear braids to court. Let the Tomahawks fly the best legal representation that money can buy. Yes. And? My. Go. Yeah. Dragonbags.com. <laughs> <laughs> With a Z. With a Z. <laughs> that is bags. West of the Pecos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he just... approached that mic like Wayne Newton. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what you were. Like I thought you were going to do a Newton's song. There. Yeah. Hey, Mike, man. get on there, Mike. Yeah, come yeah. on. Check me out at Mike Angel for Photography. And plus, I'm falling apart. Go, 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 Neuro big, phase big Mike, Michelangelo, Ma- photography. Michelangelo, photography and feet. Hey, uh, www.supermaxhardware.com, end of your sale, yeah. um, cookies SF, vibes, <laughs> rolling papers. Yes. Big shout out to Esteban Oreo and the Soul Assassins, Burner Baby and the Cookies family. And uh, Coneo, our- billionaire. Coneo, billionaire, him perhaps, yes. Ooh, oh, our... Uh, Absolutely, and Enzo's Pizzeria. Ah, the best cow zone. Best pizza in Come there. on. It's in the water. And uh, Calco. Calco. Beardo. Instagram Pulpo. Jesus. Pulpo, Pulpo Beardo. Beardo. Instagram Jesus, also now known as TikTok Jesus. TikTok Jesus. Just shout out. You guys always listen to the Hard Luck Show Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Yeah. Out of here. Peace. <laughs>